Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Amen, amen. Good morning. Um, Minister Arthur L. Weathersby, that's right. Minister Arthur L. Weathersby from Sound the Alarm Ministries. Joel 2.1 is the scripture for our ministries, and we are crying loud and sparing not. Amen. Isaiah 58, 1. We greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For he alone is worthy of all honor, praise, and the glory. Amen. It is a good thing to be able to be before you at this time. And I know many people are saying, sound the alarm, ministries. We ain't heard nothing from you in a while. Well, we've been under the weather. Amen. We've been battling with these allergies, seasonal allergies. Amen. That has kept us uh, in a state of, uh, well, we've been coughing and sneezing excessively, and but God is in control, and, and He's in control of all things, amen. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, and we might have to deal with this. This might be our thorn in the flesh, amen. Uh, I, I don't take nothing away from the healing power of God because I know He's able, but if He don't, as the Hebrew boys, uh, uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and, and, and Azariah told King Nebuchadnezzar, if he don't deliver us from out of your hands, we know that he's able. But even if he don't, we ain't going to bow down. So uh, even if God, and as God told the Apostle Paul when he asked him to remove that thorn from his flesh, he says, my grace is sufficient for you. And if God's grace was sufficient for the Apostle Paul, and if the Hebrew boys felt that uh, whether or not he got delivered out, whether or not they got delivered out of the hands uh, and I say Hebrew boys, amen, by this time when you read the word of God, they're men. If the Hebrew young men uh, had, had come to the conclusion that whether or not he delivered them out of the hands of, of old King Nebuchadnezzar uh, or not, uh, that he was still God, then guess what? Uh, he's still God, and he's still able, and he is my Lord and my Savior, amen. So I greet you in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am Minister Arthur L. Weathersby. And I am one half of Sound the Alarm Ministry. The other half of Sound the Alarm Ministry is, of course, my wife, Pastor Evangelist Sherry O. Weathersby. Amen. And, and, and we thank God for that. We thank God for her, who's at work right now, as, as she likes to tell you in corporate America. Praise God. Uh, good morning, my sister. Amen. Uh, 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 yeah, good morning. And I love you, too. That's my sister, y'all, Eliza Jean Dow Nichols out of Aurora, Illinois. God bless you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into prayer, and then we're going to get into the Word of God as He has given me um, this time for this morning, amen. And, and we're going to do what, they, what we said when I was working and living in Hunting, Huntington, West Virginia. We're going to do it hillbilly country style, y'all. We're going to get her done in the name of the Lord, amen. O oh, most gracious and eternal Father, Lord God, at this time I come before you just to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for this opportunity, occasion that you've given unto us to be able to come before your throne of grace and to approach it boldly, Father God, in your Son, Christ Jesus' name. But before I do that, I'd be remiss if I did not do this. I ask you to forgive me for any and all sins by thought, word, or deed that I may have done since the last time I spoke to you this early this morning up until now. Father God, anything, and I know it was not pleasing within your sight, so therefore I must ask for your forgiveness. Now, God, I want to thank you for uh, waking us up and watching, but first off, watching over and protecting, keeping us from yesterday until today. Woke me up this morning, Father God, with uh, full activities of my limb and a portion of my right mind. Amen. And for that, I say thank you. And then you, play, then you, oh my God, then you started me on my way with new mercies that you imparted unto me this morning. And for that, I thank you. I thank you, Father God, for this day, this glorious day, oh Father God, this Oh, to, oh, this, oh my God, yes, this is thundering, tremendous, thriving Thursday uh, morning, Father God, October the 20th in the year of our Lord, 2016. Now, dear God, I pray 
that you bless all of those that are under, going to be under the sound of my voice, whether they're listening on the podcast, live podcast via Spreaker.com, or they happen to tune in to Facebook Go Live Video, Father God. I pray, Father God, that you bless each and every one of them as only you can, for you know what they stand in need of. But, Father God, I'm also praying that you open up hearts, minds, and understanding on this morning, O oh Lord God, to receive what thus saith the Lord on this day. Father God, we want the hearts and minds and understanding to be open up so that father god that those that have an ear to hear what the spirit is saying to each and every one of them and then once they hear it oh father god and not just them but uh i know that the word father god is given to me first oh father god before i give it to anybody else that that we take it into our minds and our hearts and that we just not only be just hearers of this word but we need and must become doers of it as well now dear god i pray that as I go forth as the vessel, the instrument, uh, 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 oh my God, the chosen instrument of this hour that, 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 that I know and I, and I absolutely understand that, that I must decrease. And therefore, if I decrease, you absolutely must increase. So therefore, I'm extremely mindful to say, I want the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and redeemer, in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen, 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 amen. We're going to go right into the reading of God's word. Good morning. God bless you. Uh, James Harris, amen. And I'm not sure if this is the James Harris that I know from Buffalo, New York, or if this is one of my cousins, amen. So if it is, uh, just give me a, uh, whichever way that you're going to let me know which, which Harris that I'm talking to. But anyway, good morning and God bless you. I'm going into the word of God as can be found in very familiar scripture, I believe, uh, to the believers. We're going to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and I'm going to read it in, it, I'm going to read it in its entirety. Amen. From the Amplified Bible, it reads this way. If I speak in the tongues of men and even of angels, but have not love, that reasoning, intentional, spiritual devotion, such as is inspired by God's love, for and in us, I am only a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose and understand all the secret truths and the mysteries and possesses all knowledge. And if I have sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but have not love, God's love in me, I am nothing, a useless nobody. Lord have mercy. Even if I dole out all that I have to the poor in providing food, and if I surrender my body to be burned or in order that I may glory, but have not love God's love in me, I gain nothing. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious, never boils over with jealousy. It's not boastful or vainglorious. Does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own right or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. Oh, let me go back to that. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. Oh, it pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It hopes, it, its hopes are fadeless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. For our knowledge is fragmentary, incomplete and imperfect, and our prophecy, our teaching is fragmentary, incomplete and imperfect. But when the complete and perfect total comes... The incomplete and imperfect will vanish away, become antiquated, void, and superseded. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. Now that I have become a man, I am done with child. I am done with childish ways and have put them aside. For now we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection 
of reality or in a riddle or enigma. But th let me read that again. For now, we are looking in a mirror that gives only a dim, blurred reflection of reality as in a riddle or enigma. But then when perfection comes, we shall see in reality and face to face. Now, I know in part imperfectly, but then I shall know and understand fully and clearly, even in the same manner as I have been fully and clearly known and understood by God. That concluding 13th verse. And so faith, hope, love, abide. Faith, conviction, and belief, respect in man's uh, relation to God and divine things, hope, Joyful and confident expectation of external salvation, love, true affection for God and man, growing out of God's love for and in us. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Thus is the reading of God's word. I've just read it to your hearing. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter in its entirety. Thus is the reading of God's word, as we've already pre-stated. The word of God is already blessed. And, and, and well, we didn't pre-state that, but the word of the God, the word of the Lord is already blessed. And may he continue to bless the hearing, reading, doing of his holy, blessed word. Again, this is what we pre-stated and forestated, that we don't want to just be hearers of it, but we need and must become doers of it as well. And as the Lord would leave for a thought, uh, this is this is the message for today. Without God's love, without God's love. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the reading of his word on this morning. Amen. And as we prepare, let us go. Uh, 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 let us look. Uh, amen. Love. Love. Love is a key, uh, a key element of human existence. Amen. Uh, love is, is something that uh, we all desire. We desire to be loved. We want to be loved. Amen. And we want to love. Amen. Love is a form of showing one's affection towards one another uh, uh, that, that, that God allows us to do in our human state. Amen. And, 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 and it's sometimes and sometimes I'm I'm willing to say that uh, it, it is often uh, that we when we tend to look at love, we we tend to look at it in in trivial ways and trivial meanings. What are you saying, Minister Wesley? Well, well, too many times when we look at love and we when we talk about love, we it just flows out of our mouths and we just say things about love, uh, about who we love and and what we love, and without really even uh, actually having any type of a, a a true love for what we love. Amen. Uh, yeah, many of us have gotten to a place where we're able to say that we love when we really don't love because why? We know that people are waiting and they're looking to hear us say that we love. Oh yeah, that's 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 the truth anyhow. Uh, many people have gotten into relationships because somebody told them that they love them only to find out that somewhere down the road they really didn't love them. All they were doing was they, they were looking for, a, a, oh my God, the word love offered up a place or, or offered up an opportunity for convenience for them to uh, attain that what they really desired to do. Oh yeah, we know what we're talking about. Amen. Men have done it with women. Women have done it with men. Away. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh my God. It, it sets a mood for many people and how they want to interact and deal with one another love yeah love 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 with love love is a strong is a strong action word amen and oftentimes many times it does not live up it does not actually live up or I, or I shouldn't say it doesn't live up we don't actually live up to what we percept profess about our love for somebody lord help us lord help us but there is one that does and has and nobody Nobody can come close to compare to the love that God has for his people. Amen. God's love has been from everlasting to everlasting. God loved us first before we even thought about loving him. Amen. And how do we know that God loved us so much? Well, when, when you just look at the word of God. Where else in, in, in all of the Bible do you find the word of God? Where you find the word of God starting out like this. Let us create man in our image. In our image and likeness did he create man. And then not only did he just create us, but it's how he created us. The word of God says this, y'all. Let's, let's go to Genesis, the second chapter. 
and, and very familiar. We're going to the seventh verse. And this is how God created us. Then the Lord God formed. I'm in Genesis, the second chapter, the seventh verse. Then the Lord, and I'm in the Amplified Bible. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath or spirit of life. Uh-huh. God did not slap us on our hind parts. Amen. Uh, uh, for us to breathe. He breathed life into us. And what did, life, what did he breathe into us?